In tonight's lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at extension methods. Now, this is actually a C sharp thing, not really a Unity thing, but I use it a ton in some projects. And it allows you to extend the functionality of well, certain classes in well, your project. For example, let's go ahead and create a cube. And if we think back to our space fighting game, remember we had those compound colliders where we had you know, multiple colliding, we had like what, five colliders or something like that. Let's go ahead and set something like that up on our cube. I'm just gonna move this one up so all my colliders are together so I can see them. And since we already have a box collider, I'm gonna go ahead and add a circle collider and make the radius bigger so we can see it. Add as many colliders as you want, scale them, move them, do whatever you want. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn off the mesh renderer just so we can see that box collider as well. Oops, do not want to save just yet. But think back to when we made that spaceship with the compound colliders. If I wanted a way to be able to turn all of those off, I can't directly access the game object class and add new methods to it or go down through its inheritance chain and add something in, in front of it, but we can extend it. So I'm gonna go and create a folder. You do not need the folder. I just like to keep them organized. I'm gonna keep all my scripts in there. Inside of the scripts folder, I'm gonna make another special folder. Again, you don't need it. I just like to keep it organized. So I'm gonna call mine extensions. And then inside of here, we'll create the actual extension script. Now you can name it whatever you want, but I generally name it the name of the class that I'm going to be extending with extension behind it. So we'll play around with the game object. So game object extension. I'm gonna go ahead and load this up into Visual Studio Code. And it's not a mono behavior. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. But it does have to be a static class. And we'll get rid of what's in here. And we'll go ahead and create that method to grab all of our colliders and turn them off. So public, static, void. I'm just gonna call it disable colliders. Now the very first parameter you gotta enter in is this. And that refers to the script that's calling this method and then the type. So game object, which I will call GL. And we'll call this in just a second so we can see it a bit better. Let me just get rid of this, some of these green lines. So the way this works is when it's called, the this part is gonna be the game object or the script that's calling it, the game object that's attached to it, which we're gonna to refer to as go in this method. And I'll grab all the colliders. I'm just gonna call them col is equal to go dot get component. We want components because we wanna grab all of them. We're gonna grab the base type of collider. So you could specify grab all the box colliders, all the sphere colliders, uh, certain 2D colliders. I don't care, I just want them all. Then we can just iterate through this array and turn them off. So I'll use a for each for that. And I'll say for every collider, which I'm now gonna just call C in this for loop, a for each loop. So for each one in col, I'm just gonna say C dot enabled is equal to false. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off, jump back into Unity. I'm gonna come out of the extension scripts and we'll just make one for this cube script. And we'll just call him QB or Cobby. <laughs> Let's spell it right at least. <laughs> I'll go ahead, open this up. And we'll have to fix the name in here. I'll go ahead, get rid of everything that's in there. And then in my start method, I'm going to go ahead and call that extended method to go and disable all of our colliders. So game object referring to this game object dot and what I call it disable colliders there we go we do not have to pass anything in because we're calling it from the game object here and again the green lines just bug me OCD let's go ahead we'll save this off so all we've had to do is add one line of code I'm going to take that cube we'll add the QB script and take note of the colliders when I start Boom, they go ahead and they get turned off. You can still see the outline, but they're faint showing that they're disabled. Plus you just look over here. Now this will work on any game object. I don't have to worry about trying to fit this in through uh, some inheritance chain or creating some interface, whether or not I have access to that actual base game object, the class. I'm just extending the functionality. Now there actually are a lot of libraries out there already pre-built that have a lot of these extension methods for you. Some for stuff like 2D, game design, I would encourage to actually go ahead and take a look at some of these. Then start looking around in your programs where you could actually 
increase your efficiency simply by creating extension methods for stuff that you use over and over again. Let's go ahead, we'll take one more look at probably one of the more common examples. I'm gonna come back into the game object extension. And let's do one that just resets the position. Now let's just reset the whole transform. So public, static, void, and I'm just gonna call it reset. Let's call it reset transform. Be a little bit more descriptive. And again, I actually put it in the method down here. I did not mean to. So we're going to pass in this and put that in the wrong spot. This, and I'm still going to pass it in through the game object itself because I'm putting it in the game object extension. I could refer to it as a transform and that'll work and it's perfectly fine. It's just since I have this as my game object extensions, I want to keep everything in here referencing from the game object. If I really wanted to have this as a transform, I should make a, a, a transform extension. But again, I'm still going to call it go. All right, then I'll come in here and just say geo.transform.position is equal to vector 3.0. So we'll go ahead and throw it back into the origin of our world. Then geo.transform.quaternion, oops, sorry, rotation is equal to quaternion.identity. Go ahead and reset that. And let's reset the scale as well. See so geo.transform.scale or the local scale is equal to vector 3.1. I'll go ahead and save that off. I'm going to jump back into my QB script. And at the start, before we go ahead and disable all the colliders, let's go ahead and call game object dot reset transform. Save that off. Let's actually go ahead and move the cube. I'm just going to move them over a bit on the X. We'll rotate a bit on the Y. And scale on the Z. And when I start it up, not only is it turning the colliders off, but it's going ahead and resetting our transform for us to the parameters that we passed in. Well, the parameters we had set. Now you can pass parameters into extension methods. Let's change that a bit too. So I'm going to go ahead and actually pass in a parameter. Let's pass in the position. So vector three, which I'm just going to call pos for position. And now instead of just going to zero, let's put it at pos. We'll save it off. That means we got to go ahead and in our evil QB script, pick a spot. Let's do vector three dot up. That should put it on one on the Y. Save it off. And when we start it, there we go. Everything's reset and it's at one for the Y. Now, what happens if you go ahead and you pick the exact same method name as a method that already exists? Well, your method is going to be ignored and it will use the other method. The method that's actually in the class. So if you do go ahead and create a method and it does not seem to be working, you might want to check to make sure that that method name you're using isn't one that's used by default in the class. But anyway, extension methods, do you use them yet? Do you see yourself using them? Do you just not like coding and you just don't care about it? <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.